doesn't show up. God has called me tonight to refresh the button. I'm pressing and clicking the refresh button. What he has given you, that ministry he has given you, you will stand in your place. Ah, let me tell you, the Lord is telling me that he has already prepared you. It's not yesterday or last year. It's been years. You know, you know, he was telling me tonight when I came to the service, worship was going on, especially during the worship time. He told me something to the effect that the people he uses are not the just arrived people. He prepares them from their infantry from their youth and I'm like that I was 16 years when I met Christ from 16 till today it's a long journey and she's also like that God will hardly give big things to somebody who just got born again last year last year no 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 no. he takes you through decades Decades. That is why we must be careful about the children around us, the little ones, because the work of God in their lives will be traceable to what is happening to them now. So take it now. God doesn't waste resources. He has invested in you. And if you will just allow him you won't stand where you are standing. You will not be a product of mistakes. Father, light the fire again. Light it. Light it. Look at that. Something is happening there. Something is happening there. Everyone lift your hands for 10 seconds before we sit down. What is old is becoming new. Tamando hasataba. This hand will crush the enemy. This hand will point in the right direction. This hand will be used to lay hands on the sick. You will raise leaders and the leaders you raise will be young boys and girls. Yes, you have a youth ministry. You have a youth ministry. You have a youth ministry. Make sure it comes to pass in your life. You have a youth ministry. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Everybody clap your hands. Everybody clap your hands. Keep clapping your hands. Bring your hope, bring your love, bring your joy, bring your peace, bring new life in Tonight we have a short time and that is exactly what God wants to do.
I'm ending the chapter on quiet time today. Yes. Next week, God willing, I'm going to talk about growing in your new life by praying regularly. Praying regularly. Can you clap your hands for this book? So, a quiet time is the Latin phrase is a sine qua non. Sine qua non. That is without which not. Certain things are sine qua non. Some of you, your English is not working. I'm now adding Latin. <laughs> yeah. Certain things are, are, are labeled. They say, oh, that is a sine qua non. That is, without it, not. Without this, this is not. Without quiet time, there's no Christianity. Without which not. Anybody listening to me, if you are online, I don't know, maybe you are even listening to this message on podcasts. If you don't have a habit of reading your Bible every day, you are not. Without quiet time, you are not. Psalm 73, verse 28. The New Living Translation. Yes. It said, but as for me, how good it is to be near God. How good it is to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. As for me, the, the new American Standard Bible puts it more romantical. It's more romantic with the NASB. He said, but as for me, the nearness of God is my good. It's my good. To draw near God on a daily basis as a habit is your good. When you draw near the word of God, you've drawn near God. John 1.1 1, 1, He, God, is the word. Where's my Bible? So today, as we wrap up, I just want to encourage you that is if you are interested in God, if you are interested in knowing God, if you are interested in knowing God, then have the habit of every day drawing near. That's why I love that song Sister Grace sang. I ain't worried about the time Waiting on you. I mean, God must be so important to you that you want to be with him. I beg you, spend time with God every day. Don't find it fulfilling living a life where you are just busy moving about. Don't exalt that life. It's not a good life. It's not a good life. You will regret it. A lot of those things you will do are useless anyway. Don't spend your time just moving around. Even in the ministry. Don't spend all your time visiting, counseling, interacting. What I wait on God. There is something called the Pareto Principle. 
the Pareto principle. An Italian economist taught that principle. That 20% of the things you do are responsible for 80% of the outcomes of your life. So 80% of the things you do amount to just 20%. A lot of the things we do are useless. Matu kabayanda. I should repeat. Somebody wants me to repeat. And that person is very special. So I will repeat it. <laughs> if it had come from you, I wouldn't have repeated it. <laughs> Only 20, like, when you wake up, you do things. You go here, if you're a footballer, you go and uh, uh, train, the, uh, are done, go for uh, whatever, go to the field, go and eat four eggs, and all the moving up and down and so on. Now, 80% of the things you do as a footballer will, 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 will account for only 20% of the outcome. So, a lot, 80, that's a lot of the things you do, only end up giving you just 20% of the outcome. Let us talk in terms of um, a student learning. 80% of the things you will learn as a student will give you only 20% of the marks you will get. A lot of what you are doing is useless. 20% of the things you learn will give you 80% of the marks. So, so your, your, your responsibility, oh, I feel like preaching, but my time is up. Your responsibility in life is, is to allow God to guide you to the 20%. If you can do 20%, you are passed. Like Mommy, you don't need to do 100%. You only must do 20%. You pass. I, I, I've been to school a few years. You see students with fresh books, textbooks from England. New. Moving around. Carrying, carrying them. There's a guy, I, I remember. Oh, fresh books from England. Then I had another classmate. He had an exercise book he had folded into two. In his pocket, back pocket. When he moves a little, he just steps in. Say 20%. When you write the exam, he stopped because that, 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 that exercise book, my, note one, say note one. <laughs> you need God's guidance to the things that matter. Gideon was going to war. That, what? what 300,000 useless soldiers. Eventually, how many did he get? 300. 33,000. Eventually, he had what? 300. Did he win the fight? Did he win the war? So, your responsibility is not to gather 300,000 or 33,000. Your responsibility is to allow God to guide you to the 16 elite, elite soldiers who can clear your enemies. Receive that wisdom now. That is why God has arranged that if you want to do well in this life, go to him every day. Wait on him. We must wait on the Lord. Student, wait on God. He will guide you. Antinous, wait on God. He will guide you. Pastor, wait on God. Without him, there are church members I have visited. I wish I had never seen their faces. Ever. Not everything a pastor does is useless. It's, it's, it's useful. A lot of the things we do are useless. God must guide you. God must guide you. That's why quiet time with the Lord. Quiet time. 
a time that you start by praying. You pray to start the quiet time. It's time with God. Say time with God. Say time with God. Say time with God. Say my time with my God. My time with my God. Just a little time. A little time. You start your day. You take your Bible. I won't advise King James. And you sit down. And you pray. You worship him. You love him. And then you pray to him to open your eyes. And then you open, after praying, you take the Bible. Can I have a chair, please? <laughs> your time with God. You open your Bible. Where do you read? You can read a book. You can choose a book. Nehemiah. You can choose Ezekiel. You can choose Mark. You can choose Acts. You can choose Ephesians. And then you read a little a day. Or you can choose to study a personality like Samson. A personality like Paul. You want to learn about Saul. You want to learn about David. You will find where to where David's story is found. And you read about him. Or you use a devotional. And then You ask the Lord. What are you telling me from this verse? This one verse or these two verses, Lord. What do you want me to know from these verses? You pause. And you allow God to speak to you. You ask him how this, this verse applies to your life. If it's this verse you read. It's something small. A quiet time with the Lord. Every day. It doesn't have to be 10 hours a day. Or 2 hours a day. It's a little time. But once it's consistent. It builds you up. And last week we learned about how to go deeper. <laughs> if you want to go deeper, what do you do? I gave you a formula. What was the formula I gave you? The nature of God. What does this verse say about the nature of God? And then what else? Is there a promise to believe? Not so. What else? Is there a command to obey? Or is there a what? A warning to heed? Is there a prayer I should pray? Get last week's message. Today, I want to end by telling you one thing. One thing, and that is to have your quiet time. If you say you are having your quiet time, you must write something down in a book. There is nothing like a quiet time that you've not written anything down.
I don't know when I've had a quiet time without writing something. The Bible, when I was using a paper Bible, it was full of ink. Never get up from your quiet time posture without having written something. You got to write. If it's your iPad, you must, you must, you must write. You know, anybody who met God wrote something down. That is how we got this Bible. We got this Bible because the people who met God wrote something down. You can't just read your Bible and get up. You see, when you write something down, a lot of things happen to you. You know, the very acts and arts of writing it down etches the words in your memory. You remember? The words are etched. You may think you are writing it on a piece of paper. You may think you are writing it in your notebook, but you are actually writing it on your mind. Never read the Bible and just get up and go. It won't benefit you. That's the message for today. Write down whatever the Lord tells you. And the Lord must tell you something. If you've asked yourself questions, how does this verse apply to my life? Is there, is there, is there a, a promise to believe? Is there a command to obey? Is there a warning to heed? Father, what are you saying to me from this scripture about my life now? There must be something to write down. When you write Habakkuk 2 verse 2, actually. It says, write the vision down. When God shows you something, you owe it to yourself to write it down. Those of you who have dreams and you don't write it down, you, are, you, 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 have, you have cut off about 60% of your life. You have a dream, you just get up and go. If you wake up and you don't remember a dream, it must be a project. You must, wherever the dream is, it must come. And it must come for you to write it down, not for you to remember Write the vision, write it, and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it, including you yourself. So when you have your quiet time and you write something down, it increases your speed. A place you would have arrived at in life after 10 years, just because you wrote it down, you will get there in two years. I see your journey being shortened. Receive that wisdom now. Write it down. Write it down. I write uh, till I even write some for my, for, for my shepherds. Anything I put on the pages, it's, it's my quiet time. You can tell that now I'm in numbers. <laughs> All my revelations I share are in numbers. Make it plain. Write it so that he may what? Run. That's very important. He may not walk or crawl. Writing things down increases your speed in life. Writing a revelation you had in your quiet time down makes you run. It, 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 it doubles you up. Actually, when you don't write something down, you have actually blocked it from affecting your life. 
we say you have locked it. When you don't write something down, you have what? Locked it. Revelations 10, verse 4. Let me show you something and then we close. And, 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 and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. Because when you meet God, you must write. He said, I was about to write. But I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, seal up those things. With the seven thunders uttered. And write them not. Don't write it. And by not writing it, you've sealed it. By not writing the revelations, you've sealed it from entering your life. In this case, you know, there were things Jesus Christ even did. He said, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah, so God has secrets. Do you see? So in this particular and special, even, you can even tell that John was ready to write. It means that the posture of anybody who encounters God is to write down. Why is your notebook? Why is your notebook? I can show you mine. So as, 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 I, I mean, Revelations 1, 2, 3, he was writing. He said, write these things. Write. So here, yeah, nobody told him to write. When he saw it, he took his pen. He just began to write. He said, hey, don't write it now. That's why you don't write it. Don't, don't write it now. He would have written it. There must be an executive injunction. I said, an executive injunction. On, on, your, on your writing to, to, to stop you from writing things down. There must be a voice from above saying, don't write. A lot of us, our lives are the way we, it is because you never wrote down the things God told you. And when you, and it's, it's, it's like, don't write it. Seal up those things. So when you don't write, it's equal to sealing. You've sealed it. It's, 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 it's locked. There are many of you here, your destinies are locked. You never wrote a dream. You never wrote an instruction. You never wrote a, 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 a revelation God gave you. And it's gone. Yesterday, I took my iPad. I was having a meeting. And there was a verse I needed to have that I couldn't remember. But I, I just remembered some years, many, many years ago. I remembered that it was in the meeting that I wrote it. And I tried to remember what the meeting was about. So when I remembered that topic, I put it in. Zoom. The verse came. I got up for the meeting. I, said, I didn't what? I got up. Many of you are sitting down. You see, first of all, when you, when, so, so, so you see, I got up and my speed was great. Many of you are sitting down not knowing what to do in your life because you have never had the habit of writing your revelations down. Quiet time is no quiet time. Without a notebook. The major encounters men had with God were written down. When Moses met God on the mountain, by the time he was coming down, there was a t he couldn't find the paper. He found a stone. He managed to scratch the things on a stone. I said there was no paper on the mountain and he forgot to take a pen. What he could get was a stone. He, 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 he scratched it. You must write it. From today, you are going to discover how reading the Bible will be one of the most exciting adventures just because you are ready 
to write. May whatever is going to take your destiny forward never be sealed from you. May whatever is going to empower your life, empower your ministry, empower your business, empower your destiny, empower your marriage. There is something God has to say. Wait on him. He will tell you. And sometimes, you know, I've noticed when I'm writing, I mean now, when I'm typing, as I start typing, it's like somebody is dictating some down. They said, download. Receive your download. I said, receive your download. You may start writing a sentence, but the time you are done, it's four pages. I pray for you today. Today, when you go home and they ask you, the man again, that man, what did he say today? He said, we should become what? Writers of the vision God gives us. And that if you don't write it, you have sealed it. So I took my pen to write. And he said, this one, don't write it. Seal it up. And I did not write Everyone from today, you will have a book. Amen. You will have, if your Bible is, a, is on your iPad, you are, going, you are going to be seeing red marks on your Bible, on the, on the verses, notes, revelations. Revel- you see, and as, as you keep writing, it opens like a river. Yeah. The rivers of God, they begin very shallow. The rivers of God. The rivers of revelation, the rivers of wisdom, they are always, when God is doing something, it begins at the level of your ankle and he's watching you. If you keep going, you step into something deeper. As you keep going, you get deeper. So it's your, your smallest revelation, as you write it and God sees that you are faithfully writing, ha, then the spirit of revelation opens up your mind opens up your spirit and there are downloads for your marriage downloads for your business downloads for your ministry downloads for your church but for quite time how could I have been a pastor what business do I have standing in front of you as a pastor how can I preach without quiet time so when I take even a book Bishop has written I apply my quiet time principles Magada Baba so when I take it just one sentence can be Hiroshima one sentence we can have a camp a camp from a sentence why because I have learned how to drill down by writing be faithful and write one sentence he will give you a paragraph if you write a paragraph he will give you a page if you write a page he will give you two pages if you write two pages you are getting a chapter ladies and gentlemen in this life the man and the woman with speed are those who have something to read and move may you have something about your church to read something about your marriage to read something about your business to read something about your life to read the people who move with speed check out they are always reading something and there's nothing as powerful to read as a word God gave you you may read a word God gave me beautiful. You may read a word God gave your pastor. Beautiful. But God is waiting to give you something. No. Do you know that your finger print is unique? Nobody has it in the whole world. Revelations are like fingerprints. It sets you apart. 
the man who has heard from God, what you hear from God is unique to you. So you see, even their pastors, some are known for faith. Some are known for evangelism. Some are known for loyalty. Our, our pastor is known for teachings on loyalty. He's known for teachings on shepherding. And when he stands to preach about shepherding, you ask yourself, is it the same verse I read? The same verse you read. But what, what God is also waiting to do is to give you also your own that will set you apart from your friends, your classmates, your colleagues, and anyone in your life. Write it down. Make it plain. Everyone, have a little book. Have a little page on your iPad. Have a little, have a Bible that allows you. I have never read a Bible without a pen. Those days I had paper Bible. Never. It can be. It can be. God wants to, there's a revelation. You can't live your life following God's messages to people. How about you? There's nothing wrong with listening to or reading some, but God has something to do. Then, 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 in the whole church, then, only the pastor should have his quiet time. Yes, I should be the only one to have my quiet time. In the UD, bishop should be the only one having his quiet time. The books he's written are books God gave him when he spent time with God alone. Somebody is also waiting for you. And the first somebody waiting for you is you yourself. So that you can run. And see, and when you finish writing it down, then point number seven. It says, now spend time praying to the Lord. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So the last step in your quiet time is to pray. You start by praying. You end by praying. At times, you will pray for a short time. But there are other times you will pray for a long time. As you have your quiet time regularly, this prayer time will become longer and longer. You will, you, you will soon desire longer hours with the Lord. During the prayer time, God will speak to you through his spirit. There are things God needs to tell you directly through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is real and you must believe him as well. As you pray, now the Holy Ghost takes the things you've written down, the things he's told you, and he mails it. He puts it in a mail. prepares for you the real food for your soul. There's nothing as beautiful as finishing your quiet time and taking the points you've read and praying. You pray. There's a date on it. 12th March 2021. The Lord told me this. I felt the Lord speaking to me about this. And when you hold it and you pray, you see that things literally pop up from the pages. Remember, no one met God who never wrote something down. Without people writing down, there will be no Bible. And I say to you today, that your life is moving at a very slow pace. Write something down. So that when you read it, I see your speed increasing. I see you outrunning those who came ahead of you. Somebody became a center leader two years ago. You are now starting. Don't worry. Your speed will come from the things you write from the presence of God. As he speaks, you write. And as you write, you read. And as you read, you run. And as you run, you arrive. I see you arriving. I see you getting there. 
I see you at the top. I see you in front. I see you ahead. May quiet time alone with God increase your speed. Mistakes you would have made because of your quiet time. You never make them. Because you learned it from God's first hand not to do some things. May the years you will spend achieving something be shortened. May what you would have done over three years be done in nine months. May what you would have done in a week be accomplished in a day. May the things you write become the foundation on which your relationship with God is built. Thank God for the writings of other men. But it's time for you to write something down. And even if it is a sentence a day, imagine what would have been penned down in a year. 365 sentences will take your life to the top. Stand to your feet and lift your hands as we close. Lift your hands, everyone. And I want you to pray that his presence will be important to you. That God's presence will be special to you. That God's presence will be special to you. And you will know it is special because you will have something to write down. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you. 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 We thank you for a new army. A new army of spiritual men. A new army of spiritual ladies. Yes. Armed by the things they've written down in their encounters with God. Armed by the dreams they wrote down. Armed by the, uh, with the, with the revelation they wrote down. Armed with the swords. God gave them. Palagada basata. Siemoshka. Haliande lebosa. Madima bamasata. Madima kota. May complex things be easy now. So make it plain. Yes. Make it plain. Yes. Many of our lives are, ah. many of us, our lives are complex. Complex. Because you don't write anything now. You don't even read your Bible. You won't even read it to start with before you even get something to write. So you are living in complex problems. But God is changing somebody's oh, yes. life. Yes. God is changing a sister's life. Yes. God is changing a brother's life. Oh, yes. God is changing a brother's life. Yes. There's a pastor here right now. I believe that already, 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 a power, a power, a power, a power has entered you. A power has entered you. God will speak. He will speak. He will speak to you. He will speak tomorrow. He will speak on Monday. He will speak on Friday. He will speak on Sunday. He will speak. He will speak. But David says, God has spoken once and twice I have heard. How will you hear twice? Because you have it written somewhere that you can go back and read again. Can you lift your hands? I see victory everywhere. I see victory everywhere. Yes. That's why some of you standing here. You've forgotten your assignment in life. You've forgotten your covenant with God. Because they didn't write it down. Yeah, you're not used to writing things down. John said, I took my pen to write. But God said, hey, not this one. Not this one. Father, we thank you for wisdom. We thank you for revelations. Lift your hands and ask the Lord for revelations. Say daily, daily revelations. Daily revelations. Daily revelations. Daily revelations. Daily revelations. Daily revelations, daily revelations, daily revelations, daily revelations. Quite time, quite time. Is that a promise to believe? Ah, Madaka Baba Baba. Is that a warning to heed? 
Is that a command to obey? What is God saying to me about my current life? My